Hello, it's Nancy Smith Maddox from Shine Your Light Radio Ministry on WYTV7. WYTV7 is a nonprofit, and I would just like to tell you that we, all of our donations, even $5 donations is all we ask for. It will go to promote our broadcaster show and to promote them internationally. Our shows do go international, and I'm very, very excited today about, um, about the show we're doing today. It's something different something I'm very excited about. It's close to my heart. We're going to interview six different women who are the, the collaborative publishing, the authors, uh, the authors of Victorious Women of Purpose, of which I am one too. So we're going to really enjoy this today. You're going to enjoy this show. It's going to be a little bit longer than our normal show. And uh, first I want to introduce uh, our first guest today, who is the founder of Divine Excellence Consulting, which is the publisher of the book, the organizer, the queen bee of everything that we do, this group of women. I'm so excited. They're my sisters. I love them dearly. We're very close. And the first one is Bridget Yelder. She has published uh, three books. We're going to talk a little bit about her first and second book, as well as our third book, which is the collaborative book. So, uh, Miss Yelder, please tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Bridget, and let us know who you are. Thank you, Miss Nancy, for interviewing me today. I'm so excited to be here. Um, my name is Bridget Gelder. I am originally from Pritchard, Alabama, which is a small city inside of Mobile, Alabama. I was born and raised there. Um, I am 41 years old. I, yesterday was my birthday. I'm celebrating birthday all week long uh, and really all month long. But I am so excited to... Um, be embarking on this journey because this is something great that we're doing. Um, I am a mother. I have three children. Hello to my three lovely children, Michaela, Ernest, and Brianna. Uh, I am a daughter. I I was a wife. I'm still wife material, but I was a wife. Um, I'm a woman who experienced life in a very uh, tragic way. A, a, a way that would have broken many other people, but through the grace of God, I'm still standing today. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness, I, I do. I'm happy that you mentioned your children. Uh, one of them is uh, been out of school for a little while, but the other two just graduated in June. So yeah. that's very exciting. You had two graduating at the same time. Yeah. Been following them. They're beautiful, uh, beautiful young adults. And they, they help a lot with the with the publishing process and the editorializing and things like that. So uh, I'm happy that you mentioned them because they're so precious, uh, Miss Bridget. So tell us a little bit about uh, about your first and second book and how you how you got from where you were with your first and second book and and what you want people to know about that. Well, awesome. Uh, really, in my first book is entitled uh, Well Experience, and I got that name from the story of the woman at the well. Uh, when I began to tell my story initially, I did not know how I would tell my story, but I was led by the Lord to compare myself to the woman at the well. And the woman at the well had all these relationships with men, but none of them were fulfilling. None of them brought her what she needed. None of them gave her the life she needed. The only life was found in Jesus. And so it was me doing the same thing, looking for that life, looking for that fulfillment, looking for that love in men, and I didn't find it there. I thought that, you know, I was raised in church, so I thought that getting married was the right thing to do. I thought that, you know, you get married and you had, you know, you just live happily ever after, and you don't go to hell because you got married. You know, you get to go to heaven, but I was living in hell on earth with this first marriage. My first husband basically told me I married you now. I don't have to do anything else. And that was a blow to my confidence. That was a blow to my self-esteem because I'm wondering what is wrong with me? Why did this man want to treat me like this when I'm good to him? And I'm even asking God, like, well, God, I did what's right. So why did I have to go through this when I did what's right? And, you know, to have him, you know, just be that way to me, I just kept saying what's wrong with me. So well experience talks about that. And so by me going through all of that, I eventually separated from him. I left him alone because it was just like my 
my father, before he passed away, he told me, he said, uh, daughter, leave him alone. He's not going to change unless God changes him. And even God doesn't force you to change. So therefore, you have to make the decision for yourself to walk away. So I walked away, but I didn't change me. I just had that, still had that wounded esteem. I still had that wounded hurt. And I moved on to another city, but I took all of that hurt, all of that frustration, all of that just wounds, just damage. I took it all with me to Atlanta. I moved to Atlanta, and that begins the second book, I Got Away. And I get to Atlanta, and I'm still this wounded little girl from Alabama that doesn't really know anything about love. I get to meet men all in Atlanta, and it just the cycle just continued. And I hadn't healed. So I didn't really change anything about me but my location. My mind hadn't been renewed. My spirit hadn't been renewed. I hadn't changed anything about me but my location. And so, and I got away. I show how I got from that point to where I am now, where I got away from all of that. I got away from the bad self-esteem. I got away from just choosing men over myself, just choosing to look for love in a man because it's not there. It's not there. And I, I must say, I Got Away is not <laughs> the continuation of the story. I have so many people that are asking me, when is when is the next book? Because I have something in my life that happened that I haven't even wrote about. I talk about it, but I haven't even wrote about it. So a lot of the people that follow me are like, when are you going to put it in the book? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm busy working on divine excellence and helping other people share their story as well and not just hog all the life so this yes, ma'am <laughs> yes, ma well, is it i mean it's just so enlightening to me as i as i speak to the authors uh, all of the contributing authors uh to hear that we all kind of have the same story we've all survived we've all survived a lot and um and i just think it's so enlightening to other people to hear these stories because we've all been in a dark place before and we always think we're alone in these dark places, but we're really not. There's literally thousands of people that are in the same situation that need to hear these stories of redemption and restoration so they know there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. And all we have to do is just, we have to persevere and get through it. So your story is really, really kind of, um, it's sad, but it's also really good that you're talking about it and you're sharing it with other people. And now I want to talk a little bit about Divine Excellence uh, Consulting because um, I just think it's a very admirable thing that you're doing. And, and with that being said, I want people to understand that we're here to help other people. And as long as we continue to help other people and we keep our heart right, then God's going to continue to bless everyone. And there is a, there, there is a way to get over what you're going through. So talk a little bit about Divine Excellence Consulting and how that how you got that together and how that how that's helped other people. Well, I started Divine Excellence um, after I published my first book. And um, I actually went through another company had an interesting experience with that company. And so from that triumph, that tragedy, I basically got the courage and, and the will to build. Instead of using that bad experience to fall down, that was another stepping stone to stand up. So I started Divine Excellence. I actually, the name Divine Excellence was another thing God gave me. I didn't know what Divine Excellence was gonna mean um, I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I just started using Divine Excellence. And when I uh, met with met people like you, Miss Nancy, I met you. You had a big part of me starting Divine Excellence. I want to say that as well because you saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself to, to tell me, Bridget, you can do it, you know, to just really encourage me, you know, to say you can do it. And I thank you for that because I wouldn't have done it. If you wouldn't have encouraged me to do it, I just would have probably just fell by the wayside and just said, you know, oh well. But I actually used that that encouragement and I built. So I basically started with my second book. I put out, I, re, I republished my first book and then I did my second book. And then I got my first author outside of myself, who is also a truck driver. I'm a truck driver as well. And I did his book while I was on the road driving the truck. And I started Divine Excellence. And 
I, the motto came to me after I started Divine Excellence was, we are fulfilling our purpose through service. That is our motto. And, and that's what we're put here. We're put here to be of service to one another. If you don't know how to serve people, I was a server for 17 years at Waffle House. If you don't know how to serve people, you'll never know how to relate to people. You never know how to really love them. You'll never know how to show compassion for people because you don't know how to serve. Jesus was a servant. He came into this earth, even as great as he was, he was God in the flesh, but he came to serve. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And without a servant's heart, you would never reach people. So I thank God for the name divine excellence. Divine means without human assistance. I learned that a long time ago. And so I said, anything divine has to be excellent. And so this is the way that I, I pursue everything that I do. I mean, Divine Excellence has two parts. It's also, I have a travel agency as well. So I'm a truck driver. I'm a publisher and I'm a travel agent all in one. And I do this in excellence, you know, all the time. And it's only the grace of God that gives me the strength to be able to do all. So many people ask me, how do you do all of this? And I'm so excited because this week is the fruit of the labor. I mean, I started in October planning this cruise that we're going on this week. Divine Excellence gets to celebrate the release of the Victorious Women of Purpose on a cruise. Like, that is so amazing. We had our first celebrations of Divine Excellence in Mobile and in Memphis, and now we're actually going on a cruise. Like, that's like, and we're taking people that's never been on cruises. They've never been to anything like this. We They've never done anything like this. This is the highest form of service that I can think of. Once I got to experience certain things, I feel like it's only it's only right that I share that same experience with other people. That's what it's yes, all about. Man. That's yes, man. Point. And you know, I I too um, that's what Shine Your Light uh, Radio Ministry is all about is serving other people. I I was a servant uh, to people, helping them realize their financial dreams for 25 years as a CEO of a financial institution. So I understand helping people and helping people and uh, really trying to bring them along. I totally understand that. And I'm really excited to be involved uh, with this group of women that we've done this. This is going to be a series that continues. And this is what, um, you know, Shine Your Light's all about. It's what Divine Excellence, is all, uh, Divine Excellence Consulting is all about, is to help people uh, realize that realize their dreams and realize that they can they can make something of themselves no matter where they've been because we the women in this these collaborating and contributing authors have all been in these dark places before and we've all risen above it and we've all and look where we are now and so it's like a, a it's like a, um, one of the authors talked about uh, stepping out on faith I think it was Miss Stacy Page. And this is really what we all did when we did this collaborative book. We stepped out on faith and look where we are now. And my prayer and my hope is that we use every tool that we have in our tool belt, including Shine Your Light and WYTV7, to promote this book so other people will realize that they, they too can get through this. They're going through the same things. Whatever they're going through right now is in this book with another person that's already been through it. So, and God wants them, God wants them to read this book to know how to, to that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So tell us a little bit, uh, we're almost out of time, Miss Bridget, and I thank you so much for sharing everything with me. Please, uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the collaborative book that, that we are releasing and, uh, and a little bit about that, okay? Okay, well, Victorious Women of Purpose, we got started uh, a year ago with this, um, this book. I was, another thing, God just gave me the urgency about, let's do it. Like, let's tell the victorious side of domestic violence. Like, a lot of times you hear the stories of what happened, but the first thing that I know that had to happen in my life is you have to get rid of the victim mindset. The victim mindset will not get you anywhere. You will always stay a victim. But I wanted to tell the victorious side of domestic violence, and I put it out there. I just put it out there, and the ladies that came, you know, there were other ladies that were responded, but we ended up with seven beautiful queens, and I thank God for y'all because, you know, 
without y'all, I mean, we stuck it out. We really did what Stacey said. We stepped out on faith. We stuck to it. And we got together and we pulled through. I mean, these stories are amazing. I mean, these these women have been through <laughs> stuff that could have just killed them. I mean, you could have been in an insane asylum. You could have been a, a whole nother different type of person. But to arrive victorious over that thing that tried to take you out is the beautiful thing. Like, nobody wants to think about suffering but in the bible the bible says in order to reign with christ we have to suffer with christ christ suffered for us and he suffered because of love and because of that same love that we have in our heart for other people we ought to be willing to share what we suffered so that that can reign you know this is it's a continuous cycle that goes on and we want to let women know that they're not alone we want to let men know that they're not alone. We want to let the world know, no matter what has tried to come to take you out, if you're still standing, you're still breathing. I mean, I am. I have this scar on my neck, and I look at it every day, and I thank God for my life because I was almost murdered, like literally almost murdered in front of my oldest child. My oldest child is still standing. I'm still standing. I mean... None of that broke us. You understand? You mentioned my children. My children went through all of this with me. And they're still standing. I mean, to say, to have that testimony alone is such a great experience. And to thank God totally for that is what we do in this book. Like, each woman tells their story and give God, I mean, just really give God the praise and the glory for bringing them through it because... I mean, I think that these women in the book are some of the most amazing women that I've ever met. And I'm not just saying it. You understand? Because you're in the book. Because, I mean, you have to get the book. I, I can't even go into all of the story. I mean, they are flat out amazing. Amazing. They really are. They really are. And I. I just know we're going to help so many people. There's so many people that I need to read the book and hear the story and know that there, know that there's, you know, there is hope. There's hope and there's light and it does come to all of us. Well, Miss Bridget, I thank you so much. You're such a dear friend and a precious, uh, precious person. I thank you for putting all this together and uh, I'm just so excited and I'm just so jealous that I'm not on the cruise. So, <laughs> so the circumstances didn't allow, but maybe next time. So um, but anyway, thank you so much, Miss uh, Bridget, and um, we'll sign off for now. Thank you. Thank you. All of that frustration, all of that just wounds, just damage. I took it all with me to Atlanta. I moved to Atlanta and that begins the second book, I Got Away. And I get to Atlanta and I'm still this wounded little girl from Alabama that doesn't really know anything about love. I get to meet men all in Atlanta and it just, the cycle just continued and I hadn't healed. So I didn't really change anything about me but my location. My mind hadn't been renewed. My spirit hadn't been renewed. I hadn't changed anything about me but my location. And so, and I got away. I show how I got from that point to where I am now, where I got away from all of that. I got away from the bad self-esteem. I got away from just choosing men over myself, just choosing to look for love in a man because it's not there. It's not there. And I, I must say, I got away is not <laughs> the continuation of the story. I have so many people that are asking me, when is, when is the next book? Because I have something in my life that happened that I haven't even wrote about. I talk about it, but I haven't even wrote about it. So a lot of the people that follow me are like, when are you going to put it in the book? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm busy working on divine excellence and helping other people share their story as well and not just hog all the life. So this yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, is it? I mean, it's just so enlightening to me as I, as I speak to the authors, uh, all of the contributing authors, uh, to hear that we all kind of have the same story. We've all survived. We've all survived a lot, and um, and I just think it's so enlightening to other people to hear these stories 
because we've all been in a dark place before and we always think we're alone in these dark places, but we're really not. There's literally thousands of people that are in the same situation that need to hear these stories of redemption and restoration so they know there's light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. And all we have to do is just we have to persevere and get through it. So your story is really, really kind of um, – it's sad, but it's also really good that you're talking about it and you're sharing it with other people. And now I want to talk a little bit about Divine Excellence uh, Consulting because um, I just think it's a very admirable thing that you're doing. And, and with that being said, I want people to understand that we're here to help other people. And as long as we continue to help other people and we keep our heart right, then God's going to continue to bless everyone. And there is, uh, there, there is a way to get over what you're going through. So talk a little bit about Divine Excellence Consulting and how, that, how you got that together and how, that, how that's helped other people. Well, I started Divine Excellence um, after I published my first book. And um, I actually went through another company had an interesting experience with that company. And so from that triumph, that tragedy, I basically got the courage and and the will to build. Instead of using that bad experience to fall down, that was another stepping stone to stand up. So I started Divine Excellence. I actually, the name Divine Excellence was another thing God gave me. I didn't know what Divine Excellence was gonna mean um, I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I just started using Divine Excellence. And when I uh, met with met people like you, Miss Nancy, I met you. You had a big part of me starting Divine Excellence. I want to say that as well because you saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself to, to tell me, Bridget, you can do it, you know, to just really encourage me, you know, to say you can do it. And I thank you for that because I wouldn't have done it. If you wouldn't have encouraged me to do it, I just would have probably just fell by the wayside and just said, you know, oh well. But I actually used that that encouragement and I built. So I basically started with my second book. I put out, I, re, I republished my first book and then I did my second book. And then I got my first author outside of myself, who is also a truck driver. I'm a truck driver as well. And I did his book while I was on the road driving the truck. And I started Divine Excellence. And I, the motto came to me after I started Divine Excellence was, we are fulfilling our purpose through service. That is our motto. And, and that's what we're put here. We're put here to be of service to one another. If you don't know how to serve people, I was a server for 17 years at Waffle House. If you don't know how to serve people, you'll never know how to relate to people. You never know how to really love them. You'll never know how to show compassion for people because you don't know how to serve. Jesus was a servant. He came into this earth, even as great as he was, he was God in the flesh, but he came to serve. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And without a servant's heart, you would never reach people. So I thank God for the name divine excellence. Divine means without human assistance. I learned that a long time ago. And so I said, anything divine has to be excellent. And so this is the way that I I pursue everything that I do. I mean, divine excellence has two parts. It's also, I have a travel agency as well. So I'm a truck driver. I'm a publisher and I'm a travel agent all in one. And I do this in excellence, you know, all the time. And it's only the grace of God that gives me the strength to be able to do all. So many people ask me, how do you do all of this? And I'm so excited because this week is the fruit of the labor. I mean, I started in October planning this cruise that we're going on this week. Divine Excellence gets to celebrate the release of the Victorious Women of Purpose on a cruise. Like, that is so amazing. We had our first celebrations of Divine Excellence in Mobile and in Memphis. And now we're actually going on a cruise. Like, that's like... And we're taking people that's never been on cruises. They've never been to anything like this. We, They've never done anything like this. This is the highest form of service that I can think of. Once I got to experience certain things, I feel like it's only, it's only right that I share that same experience with other people. That's what it's yes, all about. Man. That's yes, ma'am. And you know, I, I too, um, that's what Shine Your Light uh, Radio Ministry is all about is 
serving other people. I, I was a servant uh, to people, helping them realize their financial dreams for 25 years as a CEO of a financial institution. So I understand helping people and helping people and uh, really trying to bring them along. I totally understand that. And I'm really excited to be involved uh, with this group of women that we've done this. This is going to be a series that continues. And this is what, um, you know, Shine Your Light's all about. It's what Divine Excellence, is all, uh, Divine Excellence Consulting is all about, is to help people uh, realize that realize their dreams and realize that they can they can make something of themselves no matter where they've been because we the women in this these collaborating and contributing authors have all been in these dark places before and we've all risen above it and we've all and look where we are now and so it's like a, a it's like a, um, one of the authors talked about uh, stepping out on faith I think it was Miss Stacy Page. And this is really what we all did when we did this collaborative book. We stepped out on faith and look where we are now. And my prayer and my hope is that we use every tool that we have in our tool belt, including Shine Your Light and WYTV7, to promote this book so other people will realize that they, they too can get through this. They're going through the same things. Whatever they're going through right now is in this book with another person that's already been through it. So, and God wants them, God wants them to read this book to know how to, to that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Hello, it's Nancy Smith Maddox on WYTV7 on Shine Your Light Radio Ministry. WYTV7 is a nonprofit, and we're doing a very special interview with six different women today. The women and the authors of Victorious Women of Purpose. And now we have uh, Miss Colleen Williams. I'm so excited to have you on the on the show, Colleen. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions, but I really don't have but about 10 minutes with each one of you because we didn't want it to go over an hour. But what I'd like to know is kind of uh, tell me, let me tell a little bit about you first. You are a writing coach with the Blackstone Innovation School, and you have you are a published author of two books. Your first book was Who Feels It Knows It. And I think that's very interesting. So I'd like to talk a little bit about just your testimony and what brought you to your first book and tell us what it's about. <laughs> so my first book is called Who Feels It Knows It? And it's about my personal life story, everything I've been through in life. And the reason why I named it that is I'm the one that know what I went through. Was everybody's trying to tell you what you've been through. I know what I went through. So I felt it. So I know it. And it's just, it went into poetry and stories and dedications of my whole entire story from being abused as a young child to rape to domestic violence to homelessness, abandonment, every single thing. And it's just, it's on Amazon.com still. Just, that was my first love, my first everything. Well, that's, that's just awesome. All of uh, us authors that are in this victorious women of purpose, we're all, we've all, we're all overcomers. We're all survivors. And I'm just so excited. I know you took your first book and your life story and you condensed it down to put two chapters in our book that's getting ready to be released. So tell us a little bit more about your story and your testimony and w what you did with the two chapters in your book for victorious women of purpose. So the two chapters in my book, one is called From Trials to Triumph, and the other one is called Why, Not Why Me, But Try Me. And it's like every single thing I've gone through. It's like I got that from Bridget because I was going through something with the cancer, with the ex-husband, and I kept asking Bridget, why? And she was like, don't ask why. And I was so mad. And I'm like, what you mean don't ask why? And she was like, don't ever question God. And when she said that, I went to work. And it's like, you know what? Not why me, but try me. Because every single thing I went through, I was able to get over it. So I, I got that line from Bridget when, when, when she talked about the book. So I, that's where that came from. And Trials to Triumph is just anybody that's going through something, there is victory at the end of the road. There is, like... T pain don't last forever. Nothing is temporary. So it's just that nothing is permanent. 
Well, well you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the whole reason that we, we did this book is because we want to reach out to everyone. We want it to go international and it will go international because of this show. This show on WYTV7 is an international radio show and it will be international. But what's so exciting is so we're going to reach so many people that are in the same predicaments that we were in, the same situations that we were in, and what we offer them is hope and that there is redemption and restoration. We can get through it. When we're in our darkest moments, we don't realize, we think we're alone, and we're really not because lots of people are going through the same thing. So it's just really, really exciting to me to be a part of this book and to be a part of my new sisterhood that I have and to meet everyone. But um, so tell me what you're doing now after you've gotten your books released and all of that, what is up now on the agenda? So right now I'm still pushing the book. I'm still promoting it, marketing it, trying to get it to as much shelters as I can in Boston and in Trinidad, my country. And I'm still doing speaking engagements. I'm still mentoring. I'm still just waiting to, you know, push it more and be able to speak to shelters and jails and prisons and more battered women. And just get the story across that you can come you can come out of it. It's it's it, it can happen. I did. It happened to me and I know it can happen for somebody else. Oh, absolutely. God God's grace affects all of us. We just have to be able to stop and listen to what uh, what we're supposed to be hearing. Speaking of prison ministry, I'm not sure you're aware, you may have seen it advertised, but um, I have a prison ministry where where uh, Bridget and I at Divine Excellence uh, Consulting, we will teach uh, the prisoners and the incarcerated how to write their story and then we'll publish their books for them. So it's very, it's a very good program. So as you're in there and you're talking, a lot of people will say, how do I do that? I mean, I want to tell my story. I want to be, you know, I want to be a, a light to everyone else that's in the world too. And let them know that we can help them with that because you're all involved. We're all involved with this sisterhood at Divine Excellence mm -hmm. where we can publish the book of the incarcerated. And what I hope to do is that it will start a small stream of income for the incarcerated. So when they go through the, you know, the returning re-entry, that they'll have a little bit of uh, income. So, but are there any other words of wisdom you'd like to share with us today? Because we're almost out of time. Keep going. Don't ever give up. And of course, I'd like to thank Bridget, you, the whole of the victorious woman of purpose for allowing me to be a part of this book. Thank you so much to my mentor, Miss Natasha Moore, who pushed me, cried with me, prayed with me. She's always there. Anytime I say no, she says yes. Constant prayers. And I'm telling you, I just appreciate her so much. Whoever you know, this story reaches to my future husband, Anthony Hamilton. And I want these women and them to know that there is love after abuse. So don't ever feel like you're stuck in this situation because someone can love you. It happens to Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, you're so right, and I'm so happy that that you've uh, you've had such a great story and a good redemption and restoration. Okay, thank I'm you so much. It is a pleasure to meet you, and thank you, Natasha, for being a great mentor to our friend. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye bye. Now, thank. You. Hello, it's Nancy Smith Maddox on WYTV Seven. Shine Your Light Radio Ministry. We're continuing our interview with the six, the seven authors of Victorious Women of Purpose. I'm just so excited. We're getting ready to interview our next one. Her name is uh, Janita Green. She's from Mobile, Alabama. She's going to have an awesome little testimony to share with us and talk to us and excite us even more. This is just such an awesome collaborative book that we put out and it's being released. They're all going on a cruise this week to release the books. I'm very excited. Just want to give a plug for WYTV7. We are a nonprofit and uh, we always say if we reach one, then we've done our jobs. Uh, we A $5 donation will go a long way. We use our donations at WYTV7 to actually promote these broadcasts and to make them go international. So it's really exciting. I hope we're going to glean a lot out of the interview with the Victorious Women of Purpose. So now without further ado, let's introduce uh, Janita Green. 
from Mobile, Alabama. She's a minister. She's also one of our published authors. You can see the book in the background there. So without further ado, Miss Miss Janita, tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from and where you've been, and uh, and your collaborative effort with the book, okay? Ma'am, hello, Miss Nancy again. And everyone, I am Janita Green. I'm originally from Mobile, Alabama. This daughter of early May Pritchard. Um, my story, wow, my story begins. Major disappointment that you can help other people with. What did you overcome? My story in the book was consisted of the hidden pain. Um, overcoming the hidden pain from my childhood life, most of it I don't really remember, but my, I would say, from the age of 13, um, I developed the domestic violence. When I first discovered domestic violence, um, dating my children's dad, which all three of my sons have the same dad. I stayed in a relationship with him for 14 years, um, not knowing exactly what the you know, the best violence was consist of. I had no idea that a person that tell you they love you constantly every day, that'll hit you and follow through, continue on hitting you and expecting you to understand why they was hitting you or beating on you for no reason. And they was telling you they love you. Um, I gave, a, gave my life to the Lord when I was 17. That's when I first discovered what the true meaning of real love was consist of and how a person and a man really supposed to love you. Um, going back now to my childhood life, I mentioned my mom also in the book and I want to clarify some stuff. I had a very, very sweet mom and I was kind of afraid to let mom know that I had put her in the book because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I didn't want to. It's okay, darling, it's okay. Um, it's, all, it's such awesome therapy, and just remember as you talk, uh, Miss Janita, you're so precious, and you're God's child, and he's He's redeemed you and restored you through all this. And, ma'am, yeah. I'm sorry, I called my mom to let her know, but she was also letting me know that she was also a domestic violence, her own self, and I didn't know that my mom, because she's such a strong woman, and I didn't know she had to go through similar or some the same stuff that I went through. So she did tell me she was going to whoop my butt, but that was a little cliche thing. <laughs> um, um, like I say, Bridget, such a wonderful person. Um, I thank God for her um, encouraging me to be able to express myself and then being able to escape the hidden pain that I endured in my life. Um, throughout my childhood, elementary school. Like I say, I was called the ugly duckling. I was called the Cinderella. Um, it's so much, Miss Nancy, like I said, I don't remember a whole lot. And for what I do remember, as you can see, it's painful. Um, but I'm grateful to God for coming in my life, transforming my life, and making me to become the young woman that I am, believing that I know by Him I could do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I can also continue overcoming the domestic violence that I have overcome throughout these years in my life. Um, I thank God for just doing for me personally what he has done for me and where he's taken me to now in this particular time in my life. And I thank God for you, Miss Nancy, and, and these other six women that the Lord have bless me to become a part of y'all life and y'all becoming a part of my life. And I got a chance to meet Miss Stacy. And um, it's just so wonderful. I get a chance to go on the cruise the first time in my life. Um, well, you're experiencing a lot of first and I'm so excited for you. You're, you're so tender hearted and just such a precious, a precious person um, that I've never met in person, but now I've met you on here and I'm real excited uh, because you know what our book is going to do. Our book is going to help so many people because when you were going through it, when I was going through it, when we were all going through what we were going through, we thought we were alone and we were never alone. I mean, God was always with us, 
that's what helped us survive. And without God's grace, it would have never happened. But think of the people that are going to read this story that are in these situations now. So that's the whole purpose of this interview, as well as the cruise and the release of the book and everything that we're trying to do to get our book and our story out is because we want to be able to help the people that are experiencing this now. Because you have a total sense of hopelessness when you're in a situation like that. You just don't know how you can survive. And, uh, you know, you and your children. And it's just it's just hard. So this is the good part of what you've been through, if you think about it. God never puts us through more than what, what we can handle. But when we get through with it, boy, isn't there joy at the end and light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm so excited to have you today. I really didn't mean to upset you. I didn't mean to make you emotional. But I... But I understand. I totally understand. And, and I love you for telling your part of the story. And people are just going to have to get the book to read the whole story, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Hello, it's Nancy Smith Maddox again. We're talking to another one of the authors of Ver Victorious Women of Purpose, the book that just released, that everyone needs to get. Everyone needs this book. If you've gone through anything in your life or you're going through anything now, I guarantee you there's an example of what you've what you've gone through and how you can get through it by the women that are sharing their story in this book. The next one we're going to interview is, uh, is Miss Stacy uh, Page. I'm really excited. She's from Memphis, Tennessee. She's one of my, one of my very good friends and one of my sisters for many years. And uh, she is truly a lady entrepreneur. She is into everything. She does all kind of things. I can't really list everything she does, but she is true a lady entrepreneur. She's also a published author of two books, The Victorious uh, Women of Purpose, as well as her first book that she, uh, that she released. She's going to talk a little bit about that. So without further ado, Miss Stacy, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got with, to your first book and how you got involved with this collaborative book. Okay. Well, like she said, I'm Stacy Page. I've written another book before, as she said, but first let me tell you a little bit about myself. I am a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a published author, I'm a business owner. I do a little bit of everything. <laughs> so about my first book, it's called Unidentified Stalker, Close to Death. It's basically a fiction, so it, it, somebody can attest to it that it may, may be about their life. Because it give me so it has some domestic violence in it, which I've never experienced myself. It has some domestic violence, some abuse, some mental disorder. It's just got a little bit of everything in it. And the powerful women of purpose, the powerful women of purpose that I've written in, and my story is about stepping out on faith. It's basically had to do with my first book about how I went to. Uh, Anderson, South Carolina, took me eight hours to get there with little to no sleep. Me and my daughter basically did a road trip, went there, did the uh, event, and came right back. So it was like we were riding on little to no sleep, leaving at 1.30 in the morning, and we were, we were tired. We were really, really tired. We was, I was so tired, too. I was driving. My daughter was sitting in the uh, passenger seat, and it was, I, I, I guess I had kind of dozed off for a second, Good thing she was sitting there because it was an 18-wheeler. I almost went to the back of this 18-wheeler and hit it. So she woke me up, which was, I'm like, okay, I'm glad she was there because if she hadn't have been there, it would have been a, a whole different story. I probably wouldn't be sitting on this couch right now. So mine is basically just stepping out on faith. And, you know, regardless if you have somebody in your corner, just you have sometimes you have to push yourself to do, you know, to, to do what you want to do. Because people ask me, because I did leave my job about last year, a year ago. So they were like, why are you leaving your job? And I'm like, I want to live my life while I still have a chance, while I'm still young and do the things that I'm doing. So I'm like, why not? So like Miss Janita, I'm going on my cruise for the first time. So mine is like a cruise slash 50th birthday <laughs> slash book release. So I'm like, I'm really excited. So... I'm like, I can't wait. <laughs> well, I'm very excited. Um, I'm excited about your part of the book, too, uh, because stepping out on faith is hard to do. It's very difficult. We get so comfortable in our lifestyle 
that we don't always uh, we don't always listen to what God's trying to tell us. And uh, so it's very exciting and very enlightening to hear a woman, um, a, a lady entrepreneur like you, uh, come out and tell us that we can step out on faith and have an example of what you did. I mean, really, because, I mean, so many of us are so fearful to get away from the, the routine and the rut that we're in that we don't really have, we don't really take time to step out on faith and explore the possibilities that, that God's given us. So. Hello, I'm Nancy Smith Maddox from WYTV7, Shine Your Light Radio Ministry. We're continuing our trek today of interviewing the six women, the contributing authors of Victorious Women of Purpose. And I'm so excited. We have the fifth one here, and this is going to just continue to be awesome. Her name is Rashina Kara. She is the founder of Kara Travels recently retired from Amtrak after a lot of years, and also uh, the vegan queen since 2005. And then she's also the contrib uh, contributing author to our new book release that's coming out, coming out this week. She's the publish, uh, published author. So anyway, without further ado, I'd like to speak with Miss Cara, Miss Cara just a little bit and find out Tell us a little bit about yourself, Rashina, what brought you to where you are, and about, and really we want to talk a lot about your story that's in the book. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Nancy. I'm so excited and delighted uh, to be here, just to be able to talk with you on this platform. Um, this whole project has been definitely a phenomenal experience. Um, just a little bit about myself, born and raised in Philadelphia. Uh, currently, I reside in Delaware. Uh, most recently, I was working out west prior to retiring from Amtrak, uh, which I did 17-year stint there. So during the time that I was there, I learned a lot. I always say it's my paid internship is what I tell people is what I experienced. Uh, while working in organizations where I was able to climb up the corporate ladder and uh, really do well for myself as well as for my family. But through that, I knew that I wanted to have more of my time and to be able to focus on the things that was going to bring more joy to me, and that's writing and being able to educate others about how to have work-life balance. So that's what got me into the travel business. And then just um, learning about how to be a healthier you. And that's what got me on my journey to being a vegan. Um, as you said, since 2005, I've been on this journey, uh, just educating not only myself, but others on how to be able to have, be a healthier you, how to incorporate more items into your life as far as fruits, vegetables, grains, you know, things that are organic to be able to keep those toxins out of our body. So that's a little bit what I talk about in the book is my journey to veganism, um, how I transitioned from eating meat products to now just being full plant-based and the roller coaster ride, as I would say, of going <laughs> that journey. Because it has been a roller coaster, you know, just learning what products to eat, what does it mean when you're reading those ingredients on the packages, you know, being more cognitive of what's being put into our food products. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, I was telling uh, some of the uh, ladies uh, earlier when we were interviewing them that this is such a magnificent journey for all of us because we've all, all had our trials and our tribulations. Yes, yes. And for seven women to get together and tell their story is absolutely fantastic. So I'm excited to have everyone on the Shine Your Light Radio Ministry and WYTV7 because we do broadcast uh, internationally. And my prayer is that we re if we reach one, we've done our job, which is also WYTV7's mantra. But with all of us colluding together and collaborating together, it's just really an awesome thing because anybody that we meet along the way or that picks up our book to read it, they're going to find whatever situation they're in. There's a woman in this book that has been through that already and it gives everyone great hope to read a story like this of different backgrounds 
and just different issues that we've all had and to see how we came through them and how there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm really excited about that. So tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more about, uh, we each have two chapters in the book. Are both of your chapters uh, on vegan or is just one of them on vegan? Well, the first chapter is about transitioning into a vegan lifestyle. The second chapter that I wrote about was my journey of working in a corporate environment to now building my own brand for myself and my family. Okay. Well, that's awesome. That's really, that's really cool because what that does is, is anybody that uh, picks up our book, even if they're young or they're, they're older and retiring, it'll help them transition into retirement if they're ready to, uh, to retire from their corporate job and still move forward and have an active life. That's going to help them tremendously. Plus, uh, it's going to help young people understand that, uh, you know, that they can make it through the corporate world and still have a fabulous life. And I, and I like how you talk about balance, life balance, because that's so difficult to do. Uh, especially for a young woman or any type of woman that's in the professional world, because it seems like we have to, we have to do 150% in order to move in the corporate world. So I totally understand that. I know you do too. So I'm, I'm hoping and praying that your part of the book will let people understand that there is, there's life after the nine to five, there's life after that, and you can get, get, get it all in balance if you, if you try hard enough. So I really like that. So tell us a little bit about Kara's Travels. Absolutely. Kara's Travel is about not only traveling the world to be able to learn about different cultures and being able to take in history and me, I'm a foodie, so I love trying the different dishes that are offered around the world by various chefs, but also being focused on your health and your wellness, which is a part of travel. Um, a lot of times people just think that traveling is going somewhere, but it's about what you have in your body, what you have in your mindset, what you have in your spirit, and then what are you doing to incorporate those things for your family as well as for your friends. And so that's the one thing that we focus on at Harris Travel is how can we make it a better experience for you? How can we help you and your family be able to take that dream vacation that you've never been able to take before? Because a lot of times you talk to you, you say, hey, um, have you, you know, planned a vacation? Well, no, I can't afford it. Well, we actually offer wholesale prices. So now you're looking at where before you may be spending a couple thousand dollars well hey now you're coming under that so it's like the new savings is what i call it and um, we show people how to have those tax write offs those tax savings if they decide to come into the business as a partner and so it's a beautiful thing it's a lot of different things that you can do with the business um not only take advantage of the travel perks but build the business for yourself and that's what i've been able to do from coming from a corporate environment to now just full-time operating my travel business for myself and my family also enjoying those benefits of being able to travel around the world and get to see a lot of different areas that i haven't been able to do before well that's awesome that's just really a um an awesome thing to do you had a plan uh plan b and you started working it several years ago and it's worked for you that's very exciting um we don't have very much time we're only doing 10 minutes for each one of you but i'm so excited that i had you here today had you back again you've been on shine your light before and i'm so excited to see you again uh, rashina and to just let everyone know uh, that, that the book is on Amazon.com. It's Victorious Women of Purpose. And uh, we're so excited about it. We're ready for it to go international. We're ready for it to be out there. As a matter of fact, they, uh, most of the contributing authors are going on a cruise, leaving in the morning, a seven-day cruise, to do the book release and the celebration of the book. So I'm so excited for that. That's why I'm trying to get this interview done for Shine Your Light so I can air it. Tuesday after y'all get on the boat. So it'll be real exciting, but there's going to be a lot of things happening and I'm so excited for everyone that's a contributing author and everyone that will really be able to. Uh... Well, we're back again. We have our final contributing 
author for the Victorious Women of Purpose. I'm so excited. We are WYTV7 out of Charlotte and also Shine Your Light Radio Ministry. I've interviewed all six of the contributing authors and myself is the seventh one. So I'm really excited to have our last guest with us today. And uh, her name is Roxy Pearson. She is the founder of Not One More. It's a domestic violence foundation and she's also a published author so i'm real excited to have miss uh, roxy on the phone i mean i'm sorry on the interview we're going to just uh, wrap it up with her with her part of the book victorious women of purpose wrap it up and let her talk about what her story is where she got where she was coming from and how she is now and uh so we can hear little tidbits of your your two chapters and uh, so let it go. Let's go, Miss Roxy. What, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, ma'am. How you doing, Miss Nancy? Um, I'm, well, again, I'm Roxy Pearson, and I am. Uh, I always just go ahead and say it. I am a 30 year battered wife survivor. I I was uh, I am married at 17 years old, and uh, within this first year um things changed in marriage and i endured uh, great hardship for basically 30 years um graduated high school and went right into the marriage and had two uh two kids a son and a daughter and now i'm a grandmother of three and i'm the um i'm actually the daughter of nine same mama same daddy <laughs> and um both parents are deceased right now I got into ministry at a very young age and uh, born and raised in church and uh, about 10 years ago became a, a licensed minister and I always had a compassion for women. Uh, that was my calling is to minister to women, to encourage women. I always to try to um, uh, bring someone a smile on their face even when you don't have Okay, Miss uh, Miss Roxy, we kind of lost yes, your sound. We've kind of yes. lost your sound. Uh, so let's go. Let's keep going because I I really want to hear this story. I guess I have one yes. question to ask you, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but uh, my mother yes. uh, my mother was in an abusive marriage for twenty five years. The minute her youngest baby turned eighteen, Man. she left. And went back home to her parents but i'm not yes, quite sure how you stayed in 30 years how, how did that happen well um started having babies had my son within the first year and uh felt like that he needed to be with his dad and the first five years was just physical abuse which i say just physical abuse because after uh enduring other uh forms of domestic violence i I realized that uh, the worst is sexual abuse, and I endured that probably the last 15 years. But the first five years was just basically uh, physical abuse, and then it became verbal. After uh, getting pregnant with the second child, almost seven years into the marriage, he uh, he actually stopped the physical, but it went very verbal and mental. And so I felt like that I couldn't um, endure um, uh, two, having two kids and um, – financial being able to survive you know to provide for them so i stayed in it and then i um i became very afraid of him so that was a um i lived in a fear i've lived in fear for a very long time i i walked around the house as if i was walking on eggshells so between uh fear and um, feeling like that i wasn't able to to provide for my kids it kept me in for a very long time until well, I can sure understand that because what my mother always said and you know I was the child in this yes ma'am I had a brother and a sister so there were three of us but what my mother always said as we got older and learned why she stayed in she says that she stayed in because you know she uh she laid in the bed with them with the man and had the baby and she felt like she should have him take care of the children and help raise the children financially not for any more yes, reason than because she didn't want to take it home to her parents and have her parents raise his children and sure enough yes, if she had gone home 
she he would have let her take he would have let her parents take care of us and she didn't want that so i fully understand the financial part and and um it yes. sounds like y'all had a very similar situation at your home between you and your husband as my mother did between my mother and my father so i fully understand that but what i want to do too is talk a little bit about what our book is going to do to help people I'm yes, a helper of people. I always have been. It's what I've done all my career, all my life. And I just feel like that this book is a must have and a must read because people think they're so alone in everything. Yes. When something yes, happens to you, you think you're the only one. Why is this happening to me? Literally, there's thousands of other people that are going through the same thing or yes. getting ready to go through it or have already been through it that could use these lessons in life that we talk about in our book. This is real talk that we're talking about. What do you think about yes, that? Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, one of the reasons why I feel, another reason why I feel like I stayed in so long is because I didn't hear anybody talking about domestic violence. I didn't hear, I didn't see any books. People wasn't writing about it. It wasn't coming across the pulpit. It wasn't uh, in, in, this, you know, in the schools, on your jaw, nobody talked about it. So I felt like I was the only one in it. So that was, there came the shame and the pride and the, low self-esteem and so when I uh when God delivered me from it I always said that I wasn't gonna um leave what I learned behind I was gonna put it in a book and after um after talking to uh the publisher Bridget who's our publisher and talking with her about she wanted to do this victorious women um you know, I, I said, great, I want to be a part of that. So I believe that each one of our stories will uh, enlighten the eyes of uh, someone else who may be going through the different uh, tragedies that we went through. And not only did we share our tragedies, we shared how we overcame. And we also share um, different messages about how someone else can uh, come out and stay out. So I feel like the book is, um, is, is a blessing to the world because, uh, like I say, it's just not domestic violence stories in there. There are other stories because uh, life happens to everybody. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma that's a, that's absolutely right. And I, I firmly believe that everyone that's going through something either now or has been through something can gain so, so much encouragement because you'll find an example in this book with seven different women and their yes. trials that they've gone yes. through. I just really think it's going to help so many people and I'm so excited about it. So yes, uh, tell, tell me a little bit about your uh, Not One More. Let's talk a few little minutes about that. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, Not One More was birthed out of uh, pain and suffering. After uh, I did leave my ex-husband in 2013, um, I escaped, but I escaped for 30 days without talking to him and just being silent uh, because in the past I would leave and go back because I always allow him to uh, speak those sweet nothings in my ear. So this time I literally felt like I heard God say, cut off all communication because if you don't, it'd be your last time. Well, I have five sisters and three brothers and with him not hearing from me for 30 days, he became very angry and he uh, he began to stalk my family. Well, this particular sister that he stalked uh, one Friday night, he went there looking for me. They couldn't tell him where I was. And so he murdered my sister and her husband. So this, uh, this uh, not one more was birthed out of pain of losing my sister and not wanting to see anybody else lose a family member. So I... Um, so I, you know, I started this organization where we, uh, the motto is to not see one more domestic violence victim, uh, to be able to administrate um, whatever they need, whether they need a provision to get out, whether they need, we're the hands and the feet. You know, if they ready to get out, we'll help them find a shelter. We'll help them uh, uh, have access to food, clothing, whatever they need, because we don't want to see not one more victim, not just be abused but even murdered and so uh this man wanted to murder me but because he couldn't find me uh his ra his rage overtook him and he murdered the, the next person that that you know that was close to me and that was my sister and her husband and so uh that he didn't so just sad. murder oh, them you yes, just don't know he, what people have been through that's why this book is so important yeah. because i mean that yes, can happen they 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 have a, they just have a limit that they can take and then they, they go berserk and whoever's there. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Yeah. Or the pain. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, wow. ma'am. Okay, so do you and say was your brother-in-law too, your sister and your brother-in-law? Yes, yes. Oh, my He killed goodness. my sister and her husband. Yes, ma'am. He oh. did, he did. But he um he did receive life without the possibility of parole. So, uh, you know, that, that gives me the space to actually get out and actually promote my um, my book and my organization without having fear of him um, attacking me. And so, uh, and another thing too, he received 20 years for stalking me. So that's another thing I want women to understand is, uh, that, you know, if you go about, you know, uh, allowing the, the law to get involved and not just keeping it to yourself, um, you know, your abuser can get th this time. He, they can get time away from you where you can uh, start a new life and, and um, you know, protect yourself and just start, start all over. Because if he had not murdered my sister and her husband, he would have gotten 20 years. So that would have been 20 years time that I could have started over my new life and, you know, went a whole nother state and just allow myself to a new beginning. And that's what most uh, victims need. They need a new beginning. Yes, so, absolutely. And, you know, I guess I didn't realize that uh, people could get time for stalking. I, I yes. guess I've never heard that before. So, see, I mean, even a salty old dog like me is 65 years old. I've never heard of that. But, you know, it's yes, not that's the kind of information people are going to get out of this Victorious Women of Purpose book. And that's why I want yes. to yes. be on the international marketplace so they can hear these little yes. tidbits that are in the books and let yes. them know that, that one of us have been through whatever you're going through. So That's right. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Well, and that's what, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And that's what most women need. They need a voice. They need to hear somebody else say, you know, I've been there. I've done that. And uh, that'll encourage them that if they see we came out with, Beautiful, uh, beautiful wings, butterflies flying, being successful, prospering. Then they know they too have hope. We give them hope. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, that is absolutely true. And really and truly, that's what Shine Your Light Radio Ministry is all about. It's so that uh, all of us that that are on this show that I interview, I allow them the time to talk about it because I want them to be able to let people know that yes, there is hope, there is light at yes. the end of the tunnel and you can make yes. it through it. You just yes. need just a little push sometimes, but it's difficult. Yes, ma'am. It's very yes, hard it on people. We, yes. we know we yes. started been through it. So but yes. anyway, we're out of time, Miss Roxy, and I know yes, you're ready to go. You're getting ready to go on a cruise to, to have yes, this. And I'm so excited for y'all. I'll be praying for all of y'all. And I'm so happy that yes. I got to meet you. And, yes, um, and I just, uh, I'm just praying that everything goes really well and that, that um, we reach a lot of people with our book because that's really people. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Okay. I